All right, today we're going to learn how to graph quadratic functions using intercept form. Intercept form, if you notice, looks kind of like factored form. Um, we're going to do this by finding the x-intercepts. So, some vocabulary for the lesson. Intercept form is a quadratic function written in the form f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q. a is going to be that leading coefficient and the x-intercepts are p and q. Let's zoom in on the core concept. So p and q, the numbers in the parentheses with x, are the x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry is halfway between those x-intercepts, which means the axis of symmetry is x equals p plus q divided by 2. And just like in our standard form of quadratic functions, the graph will open up when a is positive, and the graph will open down when a is negative. We can look at our picture that just shows this to the right. Um, there's p, one of our x-intercepts. There's q, the other x-intercept. You notice the axis of symmetry is right in the middle. Again, that can be found with p plus q divided by 2. Alright, so example 1 tells me to graph the function negative 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 5. Now, the first thing I notice is that it's a negative 1. a is a negative 1. That means this graph is going to open down. Now, intercept form, in my opinion, is easier to graph because it gives us the x-intercepts. Alright, in the original form, was x minus p and x minus q to find the intercepts, which means when we have plus 1 here, that intercept is actually going to be negative 1, 0. And then the minus 5 is going to be a positive 5, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those on the graph. We have one intercept at negative 1 and one intercept at positive 5. Using those two intercepts, I can find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is that x equals p plus q divided by 2. That's going to be negative 1 plus 5 over 2 which is 4 over 2, which is 2. So my axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 2. Now we know the x value of the vertex. We can still plug that in to find the y value of the vertex. So if I plug in 2 to that function, I have y equals negative 1, 2 plus 1, and 2 minus 5. So I have negative 1 times 3 times negative 3, which is going to be positive 9. So my second point at x equals 2 is going to be at y equals 9. So my vertex is at 2, 9. And once I know my intercepts and my vertex, I can draw my parabola. And there we go, the function is graphed. Uh, we still need to find the domain and range. The domain is all real numbers. And the range is y is less than or equal to 9. All right, example two. This time we are still graphing a quadratic function and describing the domain and range, but the quadratic function is not in factored form yet. That means we're going to have to put it in factored form. So I have right now y equals 2 times x squared minus 8. Now we're going to factor this just like we did in chapter 7. So the first thing I'm going to ask is what do both terms have in common? They both have a 2. So I'm going to factor out my 2. I have y equals 2 times x squared minus 4. 
to get the terms inside the parentheses, I divided both of the first terms by 2 to factor out that 2. Now I have x squared minus 4, which is the difference of two squares. So a little side note here, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. This part here, that's the difference of two squares. So going back to our pattern from chapter 7, if I have the difference of two squares, when I factor it, it's going to look like the difference of their square roots times the sum of their square roots. All right, so I can factor that to be y equals 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. And now it's in intercept form, so now I can tell both what a is. a is positive, so the graph will open up, and I can tell what both p and q are. So I have one intercept at negative 2, <laughs> negative 2, 0, the other intercept at 2, 0. I'm going to go ahead and start by plotting those points. Okay, I have 2, and I have 2, which means our axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals p plus q divided by 2, which is going to be 0. And to find the y point of the vertex, I plug in x. And if I plug in 0, I'm going to get the y-intercept. So the vertex, the y-intercept, is going to be negative 8. And I found that just by looking at the equation up here. Negative 8 is the y-intercept. So our point is going to be here at negative 8. And we graph our parabola. There we go. And the second part of the question is to find the domain and range. So just like most parabolas, the domain is all real numbers. And the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 8. All right, example 3 is a bit of a flashback to chapter 7. Um, we are instructed to find the zeros of each function. So if I'm finding the zero of the first function, x minus 1 times x plus 2, um, to find the zeros, we're using the zero product property, meaning if x minus 1 times x plus 2 is equal to 0, since they're multiplying, at least one of those factors needs to be equal to 0. So we could either have x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 2 could equal 0. Well, if x minus 1 is 0, add 1 to both sides, x equals 1. And if x plus 2 is 0, subtract 2 from both sides, and x equals negative 2. That means our zeros, our intercepts, are going to be at 1, 0, and that negative 2, 0. All right, the next one gets a little bit trickier. I have x minus 1 could be 0 in which case x is 1, or 1, 0. And then I have x squared minus 16 equals 0. You could solve the second one two ways. You could factor it. It's the difference of two squares. So I could have x plus 4 times x minus 4 equals 0. Or I could add 16 to both sides. And then x squared equals 16. And then x would equal the square root of 16, which is positive or negative 4, which would be the same thing that I get over here. x is positive or negative 4, meaning those intercepts are going to be 4, 0, and negative 4, 0. All right, so the core concept of this example is that for any factor, x minus n of a polynomial, n is a zero of the function defined by the polynomial. So what that means in English, <laughs> when x minus 1 is a factor of that function, it's actually x minus n. So we're placing that 1 in for n, giving us x equals 1. 
and then one comma zero is our function. If that were x plus two, like in the first example, that is again placing x minus n. Now it was originally a negative, now it's a positive, which means n in that case, our zero, is a negative two. So our intercept is negative two, zero. All right, so at this point, I encourage you to work ahead if you can, and then maybe watch the video back and see if your answers match up with the answers I get. Um, the directions tell us to find the zeros of each function. So we are factoring and then finding the zeros. So here's a trinomial, flashback to chapter seven again. To factor a trinomial, we can use our magic numbers. Um, the leading coefficient times the constant is our top term and the middle number is our bottom term. So then I'm looking for numbers that multiply to six. We'll put a little multiplication sign there and add to seven, negative seven, add to negative seven. <laughs> well, what kind of numbers multiply to a positive and add to a negative? I'm gonna have two negatives and those magic numbers are gonna be negative six and negative one. They multiply to positive six and add to negative seven. Um, because this trinomial does not have a leading coefficient, its leading coefficient is just a one, I can go straight to, I can go straight to factored form, and my factored form is gonna be x minus six and x minus one, which means my zeros are six and one. All right, example B. Um, so that I can use my magic numbers and go straight to factored form. I'm gonna factor out what they have in common. They all have a three in common. So I'm gonna take out that three. And then I have x squared minus 12 divided by three is four. And 12 divided by three is four. So now I have a trinomial without a leading coefficient. My magic numbers are gonna be much easier. Um, top number is four, bottom number is negative four. Numbers that multiply to positive four and add to negative four are gonna be negative two and negative two, which means the factored form of this function is three times x minus two times x minus two, which means my zeros are two zero, and two, zero. We'll box that. <laughs> All right, so example C, if you haven't paused and went ahead and tried it for yourself yet, I would try C on your own and then play the video again to see if you got it right. All right, do that now. Okay, so um, first, we're going to take out what they have in common. They all have a negative and they all have a 2. They're divisible by 2. So I'm going to factor out negative 2. And I'm left with x squared plus 5x because I took out the negative and plus 6 because I took out that negative 2. Now I have a trinomial. I'm going to do my magic numbers. They multiply to 6, add to 5. Both are positive. I have positive two and positive three. All right, which means the factored form is negative two times x plus two times x plus three. All right, because they're both plus, my zeros are gonna be negative. So our zeros are negative two and negative three. Example 5a, we're going to use the zeros to graph a function. So first we need to find the zeros. Our equation is x squared minus 2x minus 3. There is no leading coefficient, so I'm going to start by setting up my magic numbers. These magic numbers need to multiply to negative 3 and add to negative 2. Numbers that multiply to a negative and add to a negative. I'm gonna have one negative and one positive. That's gonna be negative three and positive one. So I'm gonna factor this function right away. 
when I factor it, I have x minus 3 and x plus 1. So what would make this equation 0? My intercepts, my zeros, are 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. All right, so I'm going to plot those points then, negative 1 and 3. Now you can look at the graph to tell where the axis of symmetry is, or we can still use that function that was found in the beginning of these notes. Um, if you forgot, that function was x equals p plus q divided by 2, which is 3 plus negative 1 divided by 2. 3 minus 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now I'm also going to use that x value to find the y value of the vertex because we should have the vertex when we graph the parabola too. So I'm going to plug in 1 for x and solve for y. I have y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, which is 1 minus 2 minus 3. y equals negative 4. And then I'm going to plot that point on the graph. So my vertex was 1, negative 4. I'm going to plot that point, 1, negative 4. And then we're going to connect the dots. And there is our parabola. All right, just like we would in class, I encourage you to pause it now, try for yourself, see if you can get the same answers that I get. All right, so use the zeros to graph h of x equals 8x squared minus 8. Um, first, we need to factor it to find the zeros. Uh, when we factor, we're going to ask what do the terms have in common. So 8x squared minus 8, they both have an 8. So I'm going to rewrite the equation and then factor out the 8. So h of x equals 8 times x squared minus 1. Remember, when I take out that 8, there's still a negative 1 there. And then it's the difference of two squares. So now h of x equals 8 times the sum of the square root of x squared, the square root of 1, and then the difference of the square root of x squared and the square root of 1. All right, now that it's an intercept form, I can see what my zeros are. My zeros are negative 1 and positive 1. Uh, we're going to plot those points. So we got negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. And it looks like our axis of symmetry is going to be 0. We can check by using the equation p plus q divided by 2, which is negative 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 0. And then we can plug that in to find the y value of the vertex, um, which is going to be... 0 minus 8. So y equals negative 8. My vertex is 0, negative 8. All right, so then we're going to put a point at negative 8, and then we're going to connect the dots. And there is our graphed function. All right, so some summary questions for the notes from today. When is a quadratic function in intercept form? It's an intercept form when it's factored. So when we have f of x equals the leading coefficient, and then x minus p, x minus q. Where do you find the zeros of a function in intercept form? The zeros are p and q. How do you graph a function that's an intercept form? Well, first you have to find the zeros. Those are also your x-intercepts, so zeros are your x-intercepts, you graph the x-intercepts, and then you use x to find the y, you still have to find the vertex. Vertex is important to graph parabolas. All right, and the last question, why is it important to completely factor ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, if it's not completely factored, you're not gonna have your automatic zeros as p and q then you're still going to have to solve for your zeros by setting each individual factor equal to zero. It's more work and it's not necessary. Much easier to find the zeros when it's in fully factored form.